So here we are at last. The new GeForce RTX 4000 series graphics cards are now officially announced to bring the third generation of RTX architecture codenamed Lovelace into the world. And in a few weeks into the eager hands of deep pocketed early adopters. The mini machine is just kicking into full swing and the marketing tagline this time around is beyond fast, which I mean linguistically is gibberish as fast is a relative term and you can't go beyond it. And I mean like not just the, the laws of English say so, but the laws of physics say so. You, you can't go beyond fast, it's just, it's just the rules. But hey, it's catchy. So well done Nvidia marketing team, I guess. Hello again, I am Blunty and the RTX 4000 series has gamers feeling excited and well, a few of them feeling very, very pissy and betrayed and, 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 and ragey. But I'll, I'll come back to that in a minute. We've got a little ground to tread first. While we're doing that, please, 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 please do the thing I have to beg for because YouTube is a monstrous, hate-filled, garbage monster of a machine mind and subscribe and thumb. The thumbs are super important and comment, please comment anything. Really, I don't, I don't even care this time. Comment about your favorite potato-based snack. Anyway, it's grain of salt time once more with the official marketing, of course, because well, NVIDIA's marketing and NVIDIA's truth are... Well, they're close, but not always the whole story, are they? But anyway, NVIDIA is promising to give gamers NVIDIA's highest ever gen-to-gen -gen frame rate boost. It's not the first time they've made that promise. And to be fair, it has been true before the last time they said it. If by true, you mean under very specific conditions in very specific settings with very particular games on very particular hardware combinations. Because that's how this works. PC gaming is a wildly broad landscape of different kinds of games, different different game engines, different hardware, different hardware combinations. And claims like this cannot possibly be universally true across all combinations and all games. So grain of salt. But there is some very interesting stuff going on in the 40 series, and I'm eager to see it in the real world. Not least of which is, of course, the new DLSS 3. DLSS and DLSS 2.0 were huge, and I mean huge. Game changing, I think it's fair to say. You know, that, 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 that term gets overused, but I think these were literally game changing technologies, both on their own merits and because of what it's made the competition do to play catch up with them. Both AMD and Intel carving out their own similar technologies, although neither with as much success as Nvidia have had with DLSS. DLSS often makes the difference between a game being unplayable and being very, very playable when it comes to stuff like Cyberpunk 2077 here, if you want the ray tracing on it, if you want 4K, if you want them both at the same time, and you want frame rates that, um, you know, don't make it look like a slideshow, or give you a migraine, or make you want to literally rip your eyes out of your head, you, you kind of need DLSS to make it work. Now, NVIDIA claimed that with the new RTX 4000 series, game developers can kick up performance by up to four times in fully ray traced titles by using the new DLSS 3. To put that into a useful perspective though, that four times faster thing is of course in comparison to no super sampling at all from anybody, rather than compared with the previous DLSS implementations. It's four times better than nothing, not four times better than what came before. Now to put that into perspective, in Cyberpunk here, DLSS on or off makes about a 2.5 times improvement to my frame rates on my machine with my 3080 Ti with my settings, literally the difference between playable and unplayable. So a two or three times to four times improvement doesn't sound quite as massive now, does it? Significant, yes, not quite as massive though. This is marketing. But Cyberpunk is a fantastic example of all of this right now. I, I just made a video a couple of days ago about how the game's new Netrunner's 1.6 patch has finally made it worthy of another go. And of course, there's the anime bringing a lot of hype to the series again, and it's seen a massive spike in its user base, and people are rushing back to the game and enjoying it and all that sort of stuff. So anyway, I've been playing the hell out of it and really loving it. Go see the video if you want to hear more. Um, and what makes it super relevant here is, of course, Cyberpunk 2077 is actually part of NVIDIA's marketing push for the 40 series, with the game at launch nearly two years ago being one of the most impressive and fully realized showcases of ray tracing and DLSS for NVIDIA in the first place, now they get to revisit it. With the RTX 4000 series, NVIDIA and CD Projekt Red are bringing something they're calling ray tracing overdrive mode. And making those 4x performance increase promises when you use NVIDIA DLSS 3 with it. 
But here is where we get to the catch that's making some gamers piss their pants in the very, very petty and angry comments on the, the videos and then Twitter posts and whatever about this. DLSS 3 is only available on the RTX 4000 series cards. So if you scrimped and saved and battled scalpers and stock limits and shipping and the silicon crisis to finally get yourself a big fat RTX 3080 or whatever, and you figured that was going to last you for the next few years, well, you don't get this new fancy DLSS 3. You miss out. Um, and I've seen some people claim their RTX 3080 is, is obsolete already because of that. That's a bit of an overreaction, I think. But you don't get DLSS 3 on the previous cards. Not in Cyberpunk, nor in the other 35 games already confirmed to be getting it, and whatever comes in the future. There's even a new patch for Portal coming that'll give it a fancy new ray tracing mode. That's, um, that, that's, a, that's a super relevant game to give ray tracing to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cause, you know, because that's the game that relied on its um, graphical presentation to make it fun. <laughs> There's no question though, certainly Cyberpunk 2077 will be the flagship way to show the newest ray tracing stuff off. The game is already one of the most complete implementations of RTX, and of course its neon-lit reflective and complex and grungy environments are not just absolutely vital for the whole Cyberpunk aesthetic to work properly, but with ray tracing you get a very significant kick to the immersive feel of the game. It's not just a graphical gimmick, it really does make a difference to how the game feels to play. And the new Overdrive mode promises to take this to the next level. Promising, and I'm quoting here from their various marketing stuff, NVIDIA RTX Direct Illumination RTXDI gives each neon sign, street lamp, car headlight, LED billboard, and TV accurate ray traced lighting and shadows, bathing objects, walls, passing cars, and pedestrians in accurate colored lighting. Ray tracing indirect lighting and reflections now bounce multiple times compared to the previous solution's single bounce. The result is even more accurate, realistic, and immersive global illumination reflections and self reflections. And ray traced reflections will be rendered at full resolution further improving their quality and more physically based lighting removes the need for any other occlusion techniques. So lighting reflections and shadows are more realistically rendered lighting uh, from actual lighting sources in, in the game's world and how it interacts with the environment and bounces around NPCs and props all should give us a, a, an even crisper and more convincing immersive feel. But of course, key to this working at all will be DLSS 3. Without it, I'm betting you'd be lucky to see frame rates in the teens with all this stuff turned on, even at 1440p, much less 4K. But why only the RTX 4000 series cards? This is the question coming out of the somewhat technologically illiterate gamers so who are just kind of angry that they're missing out on something that, you know, people with deep pockets get to have. Surely, it's just fancy new software smarts that should work on the older RTX 3000 series cards too, at least, right? I mean, DLSS is, is AI software, right? Well, yes and no. While it's mostly true that DLSS is software, in so much as it's that deep learning, super sampling algorithm that uses a type of AI to very cleverly fake higher effective resolutions, so effectively they're often simply indistinguishable from native resolution until you start pixel peeping and freeze frames and slow-mo and side-by-side -side comparisons and whatnot, but it is also reliant on being processed on specialized hardware, which is part of why Nvidia's DLSS is so much more effective than AMD's open source and hardware agnostic solution for doing a similar task. Now don't get me wrong, the latest versions of AMD's Fidelity FX stuff is very, very good. It's come a long way since its earliest versions. It's really quite good these days, but it's still not as good as Nvidia's DLSS stuff. It might never be. And with DLSS 3, it seems that it is functionally reliant on the new fourth generation tensor cores that the 4000 series has and the 3000 series does not. For the non-tech heads out there, tensor cores are just a very specialized processing unit inside the GPU. Uh, their job is to do exactly this kind of deep learning AI stuff and do it very, very efficiently. Now it's true, you can do the same kind of work on less specialized parts of a computer, even the CPU. There's a few games out there that do CPU ray tracing, they don't rely on any ray tracing set or any hardware at all, for example. But it's the efficiency that's the difference maker here. And doing this kind of stuff in real time for a video game, asking for something like, you know, 60 frames a second, no, you really do need the hardware to be especially streamlined to do this job fast enough to make it work properly. 
That said, Nvidia haven't always been super honest about their hardware locked features, like when their amazingly effective RTX voice noise filter stuff was locked to the RTX 2000 series of GPUs and up only for modders to get it working perfectly on the GTX 1000 series cards just fine, albeit with slightly more GPU load than it would have on the 2000 series cards, which again is thanks to that lack of generational hardware efficiency and specialized processing. But it did work, and it worked perfectly. And Nvidia acknowledged this because later they very, very quietly patched RTX Voice into the drivers for the earlier cards to work on all GeForce GTX graphics cards. So we may well see the same thing happen to DLSS 3. Modders might get it working on earlier series cards, but if that is done, I wouldn't expect it to work as promised as once more, I don't think Nvidia are flat out lying when they say the fourth generation tensor cores are needed to make this practical, even if they're not technically needed to make it work at all. Like with the vastly more lightweight workload of RTX voice, it does work on the older hardware, but it does tie up the graphics card a lot more than it does on the hardware that has the specialized hardware to process that AI stuff. But I guess at this point, we'll just wait and see. For now, DLSS is 4000 series cards only. In any case, DLSS 3 launches on October the 12th, alongside, of course, the GeForce RTX 4000 series graphics cards, which, if I'm really, really lucky, I might get to see on show at PAX Australia, which is happening the weekend before that launch. Hello again, my NVIDIA friends. It's, it's been a while since we've shared some emails. We should catch up at PAX, I think. To the rest of you, thank you for making it through all the rest of this video. Thank you for your comments and your thumbs and whatnot. Thank you to the patrons scrolling up above there. Are you excited about the RTX 40 series cards? Do you believe NVIDIA when they tell you this new generation of tensor cores is needed to make DLSS 3 work? Hmm, we'll find out. Thanks for watching, I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.